Ya. Oh, my name's Stevie Ryder. Basically, been collecting sneakers since the eighties <laughs> and still at it. Then my love for this shoe is basically based off the air bubble because it was just like the first time it had ever been seen and the simplicity of it at that time with the popping colours made my love for it like grow. You know when something's absent your, your heart grows fonder for it so when they started making them again I just started buying as many as I could. I weren't really rocking them at the same time I was kind of just rocking a few pairs and then collecting and collecting and stocking and stacking. I kind of knew, I was ahead of the game even in school, like then times, do you know what I'm saying? So I knew what was coming. And when I saw the Air Max, Air Max 1s, the second colourway, the second wave, the aquas, I was going mad, like I had to have them. And we used to kind of like, well, I used to go for the women's colourways rather than go for the men's colourways because the men's colourways would be more popular. And then back in school days, you had to be original. It weren't about copying what the next man's got. You had to come to school, even if you relaced your shoe differently, changed the lace colour, or I think you used to have these little drawing pins where you used to stick on a little cork board and they had little coloured bubbles on them. We used to stick those in non-bubbled soles, obviously, just to make the shoe look different and be original. So basically, them days is just being original that would get you through. There was gems to be got. The mainstream, you didn't really talk too much back then. You got your kicks and then you kind of kept it quiet where you got them from, oh, I got them from someone in America, got them for me, or a family member bought them back. You wouldn't really talk up the business, but now it's like, it's harder because everybody's more into it for hype instead of loving the shoe. For me, uh, it was just the color. There wasn't an Air Max 1 with this colourway before in my book, so seeing it, it, it was an instant favourite out of the pack for me because of the colour. I used to have my own nickname for it, like Lemon Ice. Because it reminded me of like an ice cream. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, Lemon Popsicle, Lemon Ice, and yeah, that's what I used to call them. But they are, it, it's nice to see them come back. And the shape is actually in, in good, good can, uh, you know, as good as it can be. I got a call from HQ London, Nike London, and they said, can I come down because Nike HQ want to um, speak to me on a conference course. It was like I was crowned a master of air. They made me a master of air. They were saying, yeah, we're working on a project. We're going to make night, like choose nine people from around the globe and um, for your passion and whatnot and stuff like that. And um, Obviously, I'm, I'm ecstatic because from school I've loved this shoe and for them to recognise like a big brand like Nike, one of the biggest brands in the world, has recognised your passion. Man, pff, anybody would be happy with that situation there. And, and I was, it was like, pff, I actually thought that <laughs> the world was going to end because this, how could this be happening? Like, it was just unbelievable, wasn't it? It was mind blowing. And, you know, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, how many times is that happening in the world to somebody that loves something that much. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it made my mum proud as well. Yeah, the first thing I look at is basically, it's got to be the shape, the colourway. Like, I'm an OG, so we all love this mesh thing, rather than a leather toe box. Although these friends and family powers are like leather toe box, it's different levels, but most of my sneakers have got mesh. And this is what we love about, it doesn't crease, and you know it's more comfortable durable and the colorway it's got to be the colorway in it like that, those three elements <sighs> <laughs> this in itself man this is like it, it's like a cross between lime lemonade and a brs because of the color the in this green but yeah this is what we want to see basically loads of nice colors different materials, 3M's always a winner kind of on an Air Max one. I think I saw like um, sketches of the first Air Max ones before they came out that they were going to put 3M on the heels, but it kind of just didn't happen. I don't know why, but yeah, I remember seeing that. It would have been nice. And at the time in 87, I was like, why ain't they putting 3M on this? When the Air Max one came out, it, it was kind of it. That was it. My love was reborn. They've done well with this so far. Them unsightly creases, I'm not seeing them. 
I don't know, man. This is the feeling. It's just, you see, when I see a new colorway come out, I get goosebumps and I get this mad feeling all over my body. That is like, I can't ignore that. Do you know what I'm saying? A majority of the time for sneakers, if I've seen sneakers give me goosebumps, mate, um, it's, or if I go to sleep and I'm still thinking about this shoe in the morning, I gotta get it. The bubble, there's the difference in the bubble, obviously. We had bigger bubbles back then, so the bubble's smaller. We will always love what we can't have. I'm not gonna go and pass a store and say, oh, no, I'm not gonna buy that. I'm definitely gonna buy it, so, yeah. I, I am feeling this shoe, it's almost made, making me lose my words. And, like, if you want to say my top five pairs ever, these would be number one and two, or joint one. Do you know what I'm saying? Because these are the first ones that ever came out, and uh, it kind of, it, it caused shockwaves in the sneaker community. It was a game changer. And this kind of, uh, I feel this was the turning point for Nike, Visible Air. Because I was into Nike before, but not as hard. When, this, when they um, come out with this bubble business, that was, that was it. 87 is such a nice year. If you think back, if you, you had to be there to understand it. But it was the first time for a lot of things that were coming out. It's such a pinnacle year. And to feel like the prototype has never been, it was only done for one year. And that was a bigger air bubble on both of these units. And I think because they were popping a lot, they've reduced them to this, this size. So I think I kind of hoping they will bring back that big bubble. So as much as I love the shoe and I still love these size bubbles, but I would love for them to bring back the actual shoe that I'm thinking about so much in my head. You know what I'm saying? Perfect shoe. I got them signed by Tinker when I went to America. And he signed the inner sole for me. I didn't want him to sign the outer because obviously this is not a shoe they've retroed. So I kind of want to wear them still, but yeah, he signed them. They, BRS, obviously represent um, Nike's first. Before they were named Nike, they were called uh, Blue, Blue Ribbon Sports. So short abbreviation, BRS. So this is pinnacle out of the collection that makes a lot of sense to have in the collection because it's kind of like from the beginning very special you know like you've got something so special you don't really want as much as you want to wear it you don't want to wear it to ruin it so you kind of keep them on ice maybe get a one shot in them powell's is top 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 collabo it's like 53 56 pairs in one day like could you imagine that now 56 pairs in one day, one drop. So this now, this is a friends and family of the Paras that came out. But Nike sent me a pair and I had like a size um, eight and a half UK, which was slightly too big. And I'm, <laughs> I didn't care at the, like, you know, what size it was, just I need it. I can get a size swap some way down the line and that. I contacted my friend in um, Rotterdam. He basically had a size nine US. I asked him, would he trade my eight and a half for his eight? And he was like, yeah, sure thing. So me and my little son, you know, God bless him, we jumped in the car and just drove to Amsterdam, see my mate over there, and then we woke, um, drove to um, Rotterdam and then linked up, made the swap. And I, I must say, I, it was the happy, one, another happiest feeling that I've like, experienced in it, like copping a pair and that journey to go and get it. I've got a guy that I know, Carmino Customs, from like um, up north and that. He got, he does customs. So I was like, oh, can you do me a custom of this shoe to represent our journey that we took to Rotterdam and that to get my size swap as well. So for me, <laughs> it's certainly pinnacle for my collection, the journey and everything. So it's like each one just tells a story. It's never about the money for me, it's more filling in those memories of the past. Because let's face it, everybody wishes they were a kid again. Everybody wishes they were probably at school again. And if you're an adult paying bills and all this, like, like you know, it, life was a lot better than free. It was more free then, so it's an important part of my life. I ain't never gonna stop. Do you know what I'm saying? Never. I'm always gonna rock them, even in my grave.
I'm going to be rocking Air Max ones. It'll be just OGs though, nothing too hot. <laughs> just OG reds, that's it. Bury me in them, I'm calm. I won't haunt you. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man.